Okay, yes. perfect. So why are we here today? We're going to be talking about um, Cliff's agency sales framework. He has uh, a presentation to share with us that I've got to preview, but I haven't been through the whole thing. So I'm excited about that myself. Um, I'm going to pretty much turn this over to Cliff and let him conduct this. However, if there's something you want clarification on, uh, if you have a question that pops up, drop it in the chat here inside this uh, inside the live video here, and I'm going to uh, interrupt if I need to and try to get clarification on those things. So we make sure we can kind of keep those questions relevant to the part of the process we're in. Sometimes that's a little bit harder at the end. So uh, we can be a little bit loose with this and I'll try to kindly interrupt uh, Cliff if I need to. But uh, other than that, is there anything we need to add before we get started? I think we're all set. All right, perfect. So I have given you permission here to share your screen. You should be good to go. Looks like that's working. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, over to you. Awesome, thank you. Um, welcome everyone. Uh, most of you have probably heard of me at some point in the group. It's an honor to be back to speak on something else. Uh, most of you all probably know me as that guy who has my web audit. Um, as Kyle had mentioned earlier, everything I'll be sharing today is, is stuff you can use in your agency today without having to use my web audit period, all right? I'll be sh showcasing how I integrate that into my sales framework a little bit, but nine out of 10 things I'll be sharing here are things that hopefully you look at, you already have in place or some areas of opportunity for you to improve your sales process, okay? So to get started, let me move this into presentation mode. All right, I'll just... I'll just kind of keep this in the top right if you guys don't mind. All right, cool. So welcome to the V4 Agency Sales Framework presentation. I'm just going to move this off. Um, okay, look, I say sales don't just happen. You have to create them. And I say no matter where you are, if you're just starting out as a freelancer or you have, you know, a well-established agency, whether you're getting 15 to 20 or 30 plus leads a month or you're getting three or four leads a month, at the end of the day, if you're looking to grow your business, your job is to try to close as many of them as possible. What's, hap what, what's happened over the last five, 10 years is that the agency space has grown a lot. So everyone on here kind of knows about what competition looks like. And I believe in order to close a deal, especially a high value deal, it's really important for you to establish your authority, which means, hey, I know what I'm talking about, build some trust along the way, and then ultimately demonstrate demonstrate your expertise specifically to their problems. When you can do that, you definitely increase your chances of closing the deal. Simply put, if you're not able to deliver enough value, especially in that initial sales call, then chances are they are going to be speaking to other people or if they're speaking to other people, they probably will not contact you back. And my goal here is with the agency sales framework that I have established and created and optimized over the last decade that you'll be able to see how our agency is able to quickly deliver visibility, value, vision, and validation in our sales process. I'll cover what those really mean and how they apply to the sales framework. And I'm guessing, you know, I use those words for the V4 to make it kind of sound catchy, but at the end of the day, um, y'all are probably doing a lot of this and I'll just be putting together the framework of how all of this goes from one section to another. Um, if any of you can relate to this, then uh, good news because this is what I used to deal with before and now it no longer is a problem in my agency, right? When I started out limiting beliefs around, you know, what am I offering? Uh, we've had conversations with admin bar group community of how much should you charge, charging on value, right? And most of us, even, even established agencies sometimes struggle on figuring out how much do we charge? And we try to figure out, well, if my hourly rate is this, let me do this and then multiply it by maybe 1.5 so I can charge on value. But I'll talk about how I overcame that. Generating quality leads, like we were generating leads, but most of them weren't good leads earlier on. And so I dealt with a bunch of tire kickers, people coming to just figure out how much a price of a project may be, but then take it and shop it elsewhere. Or low ballers looking to, in essence, treat me as a commodity comparing me either to someone out in the Philippines or India or just you know the guy who is building websites you know out of his basement because that's what he does for fun and those are all the things that I struggled with earlier on in my in my agency journey differentiating myself from the competition because when I jumped onto the sales call I didn't know what I had to do different to sound different other than I sell websites right 
And then ultimately the biggest one out of all of this that has changed over the last few years with my sales framework is most people think of sales as let me take a lead, let me close them, let me go find another lead and let me close them, right? And what I realized was it was a struggle to continue to grow my agency just by finding new leads and, and, and then trying to generate revenue. So what I started doing was figuring out how to increase customer lifetime value and leverage sales with existing customers as part of our growth journey. Again, I'll be sharing how, that, how we did that. So just a little bit about me, no, nothing to brag, but just to give you some context here. Back in 2000, sold my first website for $400. Since then, I've obviously grown a lot and I've, I've been blessed to close six-figure deals. Um, you know, the highest project that we're still in the, um, that's still in our pipeline right now is between a quarter million and half a million, but that's not the norm. Most of our projects are between that 15 to $30,000 range for brochure high converting websites. Um, what I'll be sharing with you today is that I am not great with the gift gab. You guys know Nick Gulick. He's great, at, I believe, at speaking and at the sales. He has his sales process, which revolves around you know selling by helping. Um, I do the same thing. I say selling by delivering tremendous value up front, which in, in, in I think is synonymous with selling. I have in I myself have used this process to close millions of dollars in our agency, but. Um, this has worked for small mom and pop sites, right? Like that two to five thousand dollar range years ago to you know the fifteen to fifty thousand and up. So no matter where you are at in your business, just season whatever I give you to taste, customize it, and hopefully you'll be able to close more higher value deals. All right, so. Uh, let's get started. Um, before I can tell you about my sales process, it's important to understand how I pre-qualify and, and how my business model works, okay? So think about it this way. Uh, before I speak to somebody, just because I get a lot of leads and it takes me time to do sales prep, it takes me time to spend time on a call with them, I am looking to qualify them. My qualification process runs around uh, someone calling us uh, or emailing us or reaching out on our website. We send them through a qualification process via an intake form. The intake form is not very long. It's about asking them questions around like, what are the problems they're trying to fix? Trying to quantify a value to that problem. Why now? Uh, what could it look like if they could solve that problem? And so by asking them those questions, it's little about little about you know who the customer audience is and stuff like that that's what i do on the call but it's it helps give me an understanding if one i want to work with them and i can help solve an expensive problem and two are they able to invest in my services so for example one of the questions we ask is not what is your budget but is you know over the last two years what have you invested in for example your website and digital marketing first to get some context if they say something like nothing then that's usually when i respond back to the intake form to say hey we're excited to speak to you just wanted to let you know that you know we work with growth oriented companies and we're usually working with companies with this investment range okay so it, it varies based off of the intake form questionnaires but at the end of the day i'm actually only speaking to 20 to 25 percent of the people that request to um, use us for whatever services um, we offer I've, I've i've put in some questions here again these questions are, are there to better understand where they're coming from and how i can add value to their business um i wouldn't cover each one of those so then as far as our sales prep goes and the agenda sorry, for us uh Cliff, I, I didn't realize I had myself, my microphone turned off. If you could go back, yes, to that screen. If anybody wants to, they're welcome to screenshot things from this, but as well, we're going to have this recorded and played back uh, on the website or replay and everything available. So uh, if you want to just soak in, in the information now and come back and rewatch this later, you're welcome to, but I just wanted to give everybody kind of that heads up. Awesome. Yep. And by the way, uh, I love what what Kyle does for the group. Everyone here is a fanboy. I am. And so if you have questions, I'm in the group, just tag me and, and ask, say hey, what questions, whatever. There are certain things like I'm going to be showing you all my um, playbook here for just a second, actually, that I can't share, but I'll show you how it works. Right. So really quick. So if you guys want to see how like my intake process goes and how I frame it, Again, feel free to screenshot it and use it, season it to taste, please. Uh, but here's someone, you know, I'm reaching out to them. I tell them, look, I help, I've helped companies just like yours. And um, I help people all around the US do that, uh, grow their companies 
and like I, I frame it around where the people you should want to work with, right? We only commit to work with projects that are a good fit. I let them know, like, you know, we are the best rated agency in Arizona. Arizona is obviously a huge, huge state, Phoenix, fifth largest city in the country. I then link to our reviews so they can see, like, on Google what that really looks like. Uh, then I tell them, you know, our focus, unlike maybe other agencies, is not just to build websites, but help them succeed. And around that, um, we focus around consistently getting them results. And um, I tell them about the intake form, why they should fill the intake form, because at the end of the day, the more information they provide, then we don't have to, um, you know, uh, we don't have to ask them questions on the call and waste their time. I also include a, a playbook. So I'm going to close this down. The playbook in itself is there to reassure them that they're working with the right company. It, it supports the, the messaging. So instead of just saying things like beautiful design, yeah, we do do beautiful design, but that's not a competitive differentiator for us. Like we deliver more traffic and more leads and ultimately proven results. They might not know what that really means. So then I show them what that means. I let them know like we've worked with small as well as really large companies, right? So we don't just build a website, like we grow the business. So that's, and then we talk about our unmatched record. They can look at awards, accolades. Uh, you know, we talk about repeatable results. That means just sharing a process that we continue to use and then so on and so forth. We have some basic information about pricing and um, case studies and, you know, all that type of stuff. So people kind of know, like when you're starting with me, like this is where you're going to start at, right? And we know that that works for us. It may not work for everybody else. Okay. Stealing so all, all of this. that. Yeah. I'm going to be stealing every bit of that. <laughs> right. And a lot of like, screenshots to take. I know, right? So, um, so hey, look, I, I'm one of those people that I'll tell you right off the bat, like I've jumped on calls like this and you hear things and you're like, man, I need to do it this way. And I'm telling you don't because you don't yeah. know my sales process. You don't know my customers. I'm just telling you, look at these things and maybe you'll say, uh -huh, this might be something I could quickly add, right? You may not need a playbook with 10 pages. You may just need one with three. Maybe you don't need a playbook, but just showing you how that works. For me, the playbook, again, reestablishes what I'm telling them. And, and I'm looking for them to read that so that when they come to the call, they're prepped and they know I don't have to spend that time with them. And we take it from there. So here's what the sales prep and, and the agenda looks for that sales call. So before they come, I believe failing to plan is planning to fail. I, I use this through discovery primarily. I'm sharing this with you to say, look, someone's giving you 30 minutes of their time. Don't just jump on and try to sell them on your services. Try to figure out really you know, how you can help them. So I review the intake form. And once I review the intake form, I'm running, in essence, a couple of different audits. A website audit, an SEO audit, and GMB, GMB audit. Obviously, if it's a national brand, then I'm not touching the GMB. I might not even touch the SEO. But website and SEO are typically what I do. If it's a local business, I'm 100% doing the GMB. Uh, I use my web audit. It allows me to do all of these things in about 15 minutes for all three audits, less than that usually. And now I have all the insights I need to deliver value on the call. I'm usually researching a little bit about them on LinkedIn or Facebook. It's less about the business, but more about who I'm actually speaking to because I'm looking for personal touch points that I can correlate. So if you guys look at behind me, you see like pictures of my family, you know, so there's always things that I'm looking for to see how I can personalize this. Strategy call outline, once I get on the call with them, hey, Kyle, look, thanks so much for giving me your time today. I just want to let you know, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I know that you're busy. I'm not going to use more than 30 minutes. My goal is that it's the, you know, it's the best 30 minutes you've invested in your business all week or all month, right? And you need to let me know what that looks like in order to make that happen. I'll be asking you some questions. Look, my job here is to tell you about how I can help you. I just wanna take a minute or two. If you didn't check out my playbook, I wanna let you know why we are different from other agencies. So I might spend a minute or two max on that. I said, look, okay, the rest of the time is adding value. The asking questions part is I am now going through the intake form because I've already previewed it. And I'm saying, here are some questions that I need to ask that when they answer them, it'll get me closer to making the sale while helping them. And I'll kind of walk you through that on the next slide. Then my goal is to present value because at the end of the day, Kyle, I think you just shared a post yesterday, the day before about how I think you had to go in and get your car stuff checked. And then they said it couldn't pass without the bulb. 
right? Yeah. Like they need to know why they're, and hypothetically, let's say you knew the bulb was $3. Why should there be, why you should be paying 10 and, um, and be happy paying 10. And, and then that's them saying, well, look, you can go back, go, go to Walmart, or whatever, spend your time doing that. Or you can spend $10 now and we can get you through and you never have to worry about that again. Right. Think about that. If, if no one read Kyle's post, just think about it as in order for you to present value, that value has to be perceived as value. So you have to ask them the right questions so you know how you can do that. Again, I will be covering that. I then address any objections that are in place. Oftentimes the biggest objection we face is not things like how long is it gonna take because we have a, a huge team in place. It's a little about, have you done this type of work? Um, it's more about whether that investment amount is gonna work, right? So it's gonna be like, do you wanna invest that 10 to 20 or 15 to $25,000 for the project? Or really do you only have like maybe three to $5,000 to fix it? And I'll talk to you again about how that works. Then I present a discovery, which for us is to say, hey, look, 30 minutes, high value. Hopefully you loved it. What would it look like if we now work with you for, you know, three to five more hours, really understanding your customer persona, competitive advantages, and all those type of things to be able to really build your website that can deliver results. My goal here is to wow them with value. I'm not great at sales, so just wow them with a bunch of value. And then they say, well, wow, if this dude gave this to me for 30 minutes for free, like what would it look like to pay him two grand for the next three to five meetings for him to really be able to knock our project out of the ballpark? That's what. So um, let me interrupt for one second. Uh, yeah. You talked about here in the bullet point of presenting value, and you may be answering some of this later in the call. So you can tell me that if that's the case. But Jared asked in here, he said uh, he's noticed a lot of people have a hard time defining what value is. Yep. So what does that look like for you when you're when you're presenting um, value to to these prospects? Yeah, great question. That's why I have a framework. I'll, I'll be covering that exact the answer to that exact question here in a minute. Okay. Cool, so the V4 sales framework, what does that really mean? Think about it this way. Uh, when someone reaches out to you, a lead, uh, ultimately they have a problem, right? When you ask them like, what do you need? They're gonna say something like, I need a new website. I want more traffic, right? But truly what they're doing to you is just, they're just presenting the problem. Like you need to be able to provide visibility to the real issue. So, hey, Kyle, why are you, why do you really need a, a new website? Well, honestly, Cliff, you know, I think it can help us generate more leads. Well, why do you need more leads? Well, you know, because of COVID, we realized that, you know, we lost about 30% of business due to foot in the door traffic due to COVID. And so we're looking to redesign the website in order to gain back that 30%. Well, how much revenue did you make last year? A million dollars. Oh, so you're telling me that the new website, you'd like to see how you can generate $300,000 in revenue through the website. Is that correct? Yes, now I've figured out what the true problem is, okay? Now I'm able to then deliver value. And again, I'm gonna dive deeper into that when I go into the, into the value part. So I tell people, I, I share this to all the agency owners or freelancers I'm speaking to, leads are sick and tired of being pitched, right? They can see a taker from a mile away. It's kind of like when you walk onto a parking lot for, you know, to look for a car and like people approach you, like you're like, oh my God, this dude's gonna sell me and I really don't wanna deal with this. You, do, you wanna take away that apprehension. You wanna be able to deliver tremendous value, incredible value in your sales process. So they're like, oh my gosh, this person is not trying to sell me. They're a trusted partner, okay? Then the third one is vision. Only, only once you know the visibility can you deliver value and only once you deliver value can you give them the vision of a better tomorrow. Realize that, Every lead that's coming to you wants a vision of a better tomorrow. They might not be able to clarify that clearly with you, but by asking the right questions, you're able to help get them there. Once you can give them a vision for a better tomorrow, then you've pretty much got them ready to make that close. But before you can do the close, there's usually objections. How do I handle those objections? By validating their concerns, right? So when you can help make your leads feel heard, they'll stop thinking of you as like the slick salesman and more as a trusted partner who's looking to help them out while obviously growing your business. And so I'll talk about the framework I use there as well. Okay, so how do you figure out visibility? Again, like I said, we'll be walking through this. I've uh, set this all up um, here. So let me know if you have questions. So now I'm going through each module. So Kyle, if someone has a question about the specific um, part of the framework, they can ask it after I finish each slide. Okay. Perfect. So look, 
at the end of the day, your job in the force part of the framework is for them to see the gap, right? So remember, I asked, uh, I, I told you, I asked specific questions. At the end of the day, my goal here is to identify the pain points and the desired outcomes of the lead. Only, can, only when I do that, can I be able to deliver value on how they can do that and then be able to give them the vision of how that can become a reality. So what are some questions I ask? Like, hey, what's the primary goal of this website? Why is that important? Like, why are you on this call right now? Like, why couldn't you deliver this before? So this way, when they start answering questions like my last web guy sucked or, you know, we haven't invested a lot of money, they themselves are starting to answer objections that they would possibly ask you at the end, which is like, well, you know, why should I pay this? You know, and when they tell you when, when, for example, Kyle, in the example we were using, if you were to say at the end, like, well, look, you know, I've been burned before. I really want to spend $3,000 on this website. I would tell you like, hey, Kyle, look, do you think it's realistic to invest $3,000 to make 300,000? If so, please let me know who can deliver that for you because I can tell you realistically working with other clients, this is what we've had to do. That's why we have the results we have, right? So by asking them questions, ultimately what you want them to do is to say, well, wow, I am in this place, right? So I'm in a place right now where we've lost $300,000 in revenue because of uh, walking the, walk the door traffic going down. I want $300,000 in revenue added because of this new website. So they go from, this is where they are to, this is where they wanna be. And now in order to deliver value, you're, you're gonna to have to talk to them about that gap. That gap is what your agency can solve for them. Your agency services are what solve the gap. Your expertise is what can solve that gap, okay? So if there's any questions about the visibility part, I'll answer them now. If not, I'm gonna move on into the value part. Nothing so far. All right, cool. So then we go into value, like how can you deliver value? At the end of the day, if you don't have good close rates, chances are you're probably talking a lot. I remember when um, I used to use uh, God Open Conference or they, there used to be this free call app. And at the end of it, it would tell you the percentage. And I would realize like I'm around that like 55 to 60 and that's a terrible quota to have. You want to make sure that you're asking the questions, they're doing the talking and it's all about them. So my goal during the value section is to say, hey, look, I need to figure out what are you know a couple of key points of pain points that they have, their needs and wants, and then I'm gonna isolate three issues. And from those three issues, I'm gonna, instead of telling them about my services, telling them about SEO, telling them about beautiful redesigns or, or crafting you know, um, art, artwork for websites or whatever that might be beautiful websites, actually show them things that we do and why we do them and actually point out their website, right? So this is where that audit comes into place where in essence, I'm telling them something to the effect of, look, my job here is not to criticize your website. At the end of the day, you know there are challenges. You're here to speak to me. I want to actually show you that you know we know what we're talking about, and here are challenges with your website that are causing that gap, right? So in order for us to solve these problems, here are things that we would resolve if we were to redesign your site or if we were to work on your site, right? So that's when, um, give me just a second. I'm going to see how this would work. Nope, they won't let me work. Let me let me just kind of. Oh, let me talk about this, then I'll kind of show you what that looks like. So if they say something like, I need a new site or I need SEO, I try to translate that into three issues, right? Or two or three issues. What does a nice site really mean? Does that mean converting more website visitors to leads? So then I might ask them, do you get a lot of visitors? If they don't know, I'll say maybe pull up your analytics. Usually in my intake forum, I'm asking them questions around you know, the, the number of leads they're getting and things like that. So I'll tell them, look, if you want more traffic, I just wanted to let you know, we did a GMB audit of your site and I mean, of your placement. And it looks like you don't have the right categories. You know, you don't even have testimonials connected. If, if they're getting uh, visitors to the website and for whatever reason, they're not converting them, I might cover things that I've identified, which is like your phone number is not in the top right. You have to go on a treasure hunt right? Um, we realize that there's responsive issues. So people coming to your site, which may be about 50%, 40 to 50%, or maybe more, um, they're having major usability uh, problems. So that's what I'm doing. Um, let me just back out of this for just a second. So what happens is when I jump on a call, I'm talking to them, but I'm going to be running through a presentation like this. So I'll be telling them like, look, 
you know, you mentioned to me that you're not getting enough visitors uh, converting from website viewers to leads, right? So then I'll talk to them and say, look, most people have these common problems. I talk to them about what conversion optimization is. And I'll say like, look, you're missing a primary call to action. It's great that you have some of this other stuff, but look, I wanted to let you know, this is what was going on. And so then I'll, I'll open up their website. I'll kind of point out a couple of the things and then I keep moving on. Okay, so let me uh, move back into presentation view. So uh, yeah, so then I am able to give them a list of things and kind of talk to them about how by solving this, I can give them a vision of a better future, right? Remember business owners or whoever you're speaking to a lead, it could be a, for us, it's usually like a marketing director and IT director. We work with seven and eight figure businesses. So I'm nine out of time, 10 times, never speaking to a business owner. I'm speaking to the person who reports to the business owner on the success metrics. So I'm speaking to them and I know that they're really, really busy. So I'm telling them, look, uh, my goal here is to deliver value. Based off of the intake form, I have an idea now, kind of, can I position a complete redesign? Because that's really, you know, our core service offering. Can I um, position uh, SEO retainer? That's another core service offering. Or should I bring them onto a retainer or care plan or put some hours in place to get the, get our foot in the door? This is, uh, this is where I want to spend a minute um, to just say, look, earlier on in my agency journey, it was like, let me sell them. I have to sell them my service. If they don't want to pay for it, they're gone. Uh, what I realized is that, you know, you've heard the analogy, don't ask, you know, don't propose on the first date. And I want to let you know that people have been born. Sometimes people have the money and they just don't want to spend it because they don't know if it's a safe investment, right? So my job actually anymore is to say, here's my core service offering. If there's an, if there's an opportunity to get them into it, great. And if not, my job, especially if they're well aligned, right? Remember, eight out of 10 people have already been weeded out. So I've, I'm speaking to the cream of the crop in the 20%. And so my job there is to say, look, these people can afford me. That's why I'm speaking to them. Let me get my foot in the door, get some quick wins, right? Like what are some low effort, high impact things I could do? And you'd be, you know, you'd be surprised. Like for example, paid speed optimization for some of these larger companies are terrible, you know, in the twenties and thirties. Um, oftentimes uh, things like the brand or the keywords for their services or products are not on the pages. Their GMB, some of them don't even have GMB profiles. They don't know what it is, right? So those are some very low effort, um, high impact things that I can put in place. So usually I have a list of things, right? And so with, um, again, if I go back in to um, this report, when I go to the end, right, of our, this takes me a few minutes to do. So by the time I get to the recommendations, I have an idea and I'll just say like, look, you know, there are some high impact um, and so I'm just saying like, look, we, we realized there's some mobile friendly problems. We've realized that, you know, in this case on your landing page, you have a bunch of links, you need to remove those. Um, you don't have relevant use of audio, primary call to action. So I'm talking to them about the high and medium impact things. And then I'll just tell them like, look, so I, let's say I was speaking to Kyle at this point, I would say, Kyle, look, I don't know what your investment amount is, but I want to let you know, based off of what I have seen, I think that you should move forward with a complete redesign if that's what I truly feel. And I'll tell them like, I can't I can give you a number till we go through discovery, but I wanna let you know our service ranges for something like your site is gonna be maybe between 15 and $22,000. That range gets narrowed down through discovery to an exact number. So Kyle might respond back and say, cool Cliff, let's move forward. All right, that's great. Then I take them through um, the take them through the next steps, which is discovery. Hypothetically, let's just say Kyle says no, no, Cliff. Um, look, you know, I spoke to our uh, sales or marketing director. They've only approved like three or four thousand dollars, maybe at this point, because really they don't have that investment till um, the next uh, budget is created. So I say, okay, cool. Now let's talk about the key things that are high impact. Um, that we can invest in. So I might say like these three items generally are going to maybe be two or $3,000. And then the rest of the medium and low impact stuff, jump onto our care plan. We call them development re retainers just because care plans are, uh, I believe are used a lot. And then I only use care plans for more of the management side. But if we're actually doing development design work, I use the word, you know, development retainer or web design retainer. 
Okay, so that's what I then position. My goal is to get my foot in the door, get some quick wins for them. Once I can get that and obviously get them some wins and they start seeing some little results, then my work pays off and then I can, you know, ascend them up. I call it the customer ascension ladder where, you know, they start with maybe the foot in the door offering or some productized offerings. And I'm looking to get them into my core service offerings. So let me uh, interject a couple things in this one. So yeah. one thing I thought was a really important point was uh, when you get a client and you've qualified them at least to some degree, but you find out their budget isn't um, realistic with the amount of work that they really want done, still being able to position some kind of offer to them that fits more realistically in their budget is still a way to get your foot in the door and start working with that customer. So you can build the credibility and trust and all of those things. Um, so I think that's a really important point to make. I will say, um, Alicia asked when you're back um, showing your audit report, she yep. asked which audit template you were using for that example. Uh, yep. So I don't know if you have some more time to go into the my web audit stuff, but uh, that yep. question came in uh, around that. And then Jared uh, tagged in here paid discovery, right? Yes. Um, so I believe it was Alicia. Uh, we it, it depends, right? Remember what I said, and I'm gonna kind of quickly flip back here. When when I ask them the right questions on the intake form, their their responses are what lead me to this. In the example I just showed you, that was the landing page, right? So that happened to just be an audit that we had recently done, right? And so I just showed you the landing page. But nine out of ten times, I'm using the website audit one because the website audit one includes SEO, it includes page performance, it includes security, and it includes conversion optimization and user experience. So I'm using nine out of 10 that. The only time I am actually presenting the GMB or the SEO is, is if they've specifically said like, we're looking for this service and not the website stuff. The key thing is I do not cover everything, right? So like even y'all might be looking at that and looking like, oh, let me go through all of this. Or, you know, the biggest thing I see um, people ask is like, well, I want more and I want more. And remember, uh, business owners are already putting out a ton of fires. Think about us. Like we have a million things that we could be doing in our agency or should be doing. And so if someone comes to you and here's like a list of 20 other ones, your to-do list blows up and you don't get very much done. So the, this, that's why I strategically mentioned here, this is a key point. Figure out what their needs and wants are. Identify two or three issues. That's all you need. And then show versus tell just a couple of those issues because your goal, remember, is not to overwhelm or let them know you're the, the best SEO expert. It's to build authority, right? So that's why you're kind of showing versus telling. You're establishing some expertise by going specifically into things they're having problems with now. You're not criticizing it. You're saying when I build or when I do this for other clients, these are non-issues, right? And and then by doing that, you're giving them value because instead of just selling them on your services, you're actually walking them through like what they need to do to solve their problems. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. And, um, I, I, and productized offerings, by the way, Kyle, are my simplest ones because every now and then, like if I see a, a B2B company, because, you know, we, you know, a B2C company that we're working with that has high transaction values, meaning like, let's say a roof or a home remodeler, right? If they bring in a project, they're looking at four to five figures on that project. And so even if they're like in that half a million to 1 million, 1.5 million mark, I'll speak to them. And when I get on the call with them, let's just say that they aren't ready to invest invest that 10, 12, $15,000 in a website, I'll just throw out three of my most common productized offerings. First one, GMB audit plus optimization for 99. No brainer, fulfilled in a day or two. That's it, right? They can see results usually in a couple of weeks, done. Next one is on-page SEO, four pages minimum, $250 a page, and they can add as many as they want, $1,000, simple productized offering. Those, and, and then like a digital strategy session, those would be like three very simple ones that I bring in and um, implement right away. If the company happens to have a landing page, then that's another one that we'll do where I'll tell them, look, you know, we will do $999 for a landing page audit. And then we will allocate, you know, two hours in optimization with it. And so that's again, easy ways because once someone gives you, anyone here knows, like once someone gives you a little bit of money, you know, 
common uh, sales psychology says that it's much easier to close a deal once someone has put any amount of money into your business before. Uh, two, if someone's giving you all their credentials and logins and spending time with you, they're not going to be like, okay, let me just do this and then move on, right? So your job is to find a way to deliver value while at the same time uh, getting your foot in the door so that you can build that trust, get I, those wins. And I then, think that's even more important in our industry where we we have the same kind of reputation as used car salesmen and, and truth, probably the people truth. that aren't really highly regarded. You know what I mean? Because yes. there's so many people that work in their basement and disappear and do all these uh, horrible things to businesses. So people are very skeptical of our kind, you know, when they come to us. So having some kind of foot in the door offering, you know, a lot of my clients, uh, a lot of my clients will say, I don't charge enough. And prospects will say, I charge too much. And I find that interesting, but it's because they haven't worked with me yet, you know, so being able to kind of build up that rapport is so important. So if there are things that, um, that routinely come up as, uh, the low hanging fruit type things you could help people fix that you could do for an affordable price. Like you mentioned the Google, my business audit for 500 bucks that can have huge impacts. My wife's business, she has a website, but most of her calls come through Google, my business, you know? So yep. if her, uh, if her listing wasn't optimized and I optimize it, that could mean thousands of dollars to her business. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's such a quick win to, to get in the door with people. Yep. And th that brings up a, real, a couple of good points. So, so the first one is, you know, I do other things that I'm not obviously showing you here just because I can't show you everything. It takes too much time. We don't have like two hours for a workshop, but other things I sometimes do when I'm like, let's talk, let's talk about GMB. Like I have a blurred image that I can show and I'll ask the client, like you have a GMB, how many calls do you get? And I, and most people have no clue. Mm -hmm. right because they're not looking at the statistics on the back end they just have a gmb because someone told them set up a gmb so when i can show them like here's how many visits came to your website here's how many calls came and we can ultimately help track this and increase this for you and here's a sample client report they're like holy crap like how does that work and that's you know part of our uh, i'm happy to talk about like how we do uh monthly calls and show reports and all that type of stuff but that changes their mind because they're like wait a second like whoever i'm working with right now doesn't talk about this i have no clue what this is i'm looking to grow my business i don't even know the numbers right so that's one big thing the other one i wanted to share uh, because i know a lot of you maybe on, out there that don't do roi focused services meaning lead generation uh, or marketing or conversion optimization is not the biggest focus or a primary service that you offer so you're thinking well i can't jump on calls and say like i can project these type of um, numbers for clients well don't worry about that remember that if you can ask them the right questions maybe the questions aren't around um, revenue they could be things around uh, saving them time giving them a peace of mind you know letting them know that you'll constantly learn what they need to be able to stay ahead of the curve against the comp competition and that might not be, you know, specifically focusing on marketing initiatives and things like that. So just remember, no matter where you're at, I tell you, like, if you're a graphic designer, let's say you don't do anything about leads, right? Like, if you ask them the right questions, like, you know, what does your brand identity say about your company to people who have no clue about it? You know, does your website and your brochure match up? And if they say no, like you can talk to them and show them the value of having a cohesive message that builds trust and establishes them with the USP. And it's not just visuals, it's actually messaging, right? And that's how the light bulb comes on there. So my point is, I'm showing you this from the web and SEO space, because obviously we're in the tab group and a lot of people offer that. That, but whether you do SEO or content marketing or content writing or graphic design, this framework can be leveraged in different ways because I use this framework for multiple types of services. Like if I'm doing PPC, I'm running an audit. Sadly, my web audit doesn't have a PPC section yet. So that's more manual, but we're working to put that in place as well. But the same concept goes, deliver value, identify the gaps, give them a vision of a better tomorrow, deliver value on things they don't understand address the validations, close the deal. Cool. Awesome. All right. So then lastly, at the end, like obviously, you know, if you're a great salesman, chances are maybe you don't have very many objections, but if you do have objections, I have some simple things to put in place. I would say just be a kind human being. That's probably, if you could get that done and, and show some empathy, you will be good. 
Um, and I'll show you an example in the next page of something that most people wouldn't do. And um, I get it, like it's, a, it's an odd outlier, but I'm going to show you how that the same process um, worked wonders, I would say cons considered a miracle. But I think um, time and time again, I've seen it work. So I highly recommend that. So dealing with objections. So simply put acronym CARE. Clarify, acknowledge, respond, explore, right? So when someone says something to you, for example, on the next slide, someone told me like, Cliff, we're a small business, we don't have the money. Um, wh what don't they have? Why don't they have it, right? So clarify the objection and make sure you truly understand what's behind it. Because if you can't find out what's behind it, you're not gonna be able to address it. Acknowledge the problem. It's really, really important for you to be able to acknowledge and, and, and let them know that you understand what they're going through and validate it and then respond. Um, the feel felt found methodology, it's out there. My sales coach uh, many years ago taught me this um, and it's really simple. Hey Kyle, look, you know, I understand how you feel, right? Uh, you're not the first one to do this. We've worked with other, um, we worked with other businesses just like you and they felt like the investment was gonna be too much. But what they found was by trusting us with smaller projects like this within three to four months, they saw results and got back their ROI. And now, you know, they've heavily invested in our services, right? And I obviously personalize it specifically to what they're doing, but the feel felt found methodology is just a very simple way to, to show empathy while addressing the objection and letting them know that, that by following what you're recommending, not only can, you know, they see the results, but other people have just like them. And it's kind of, in essence, for me, it diffuses so many of the objections we deal with. At the end of the, at the end of that, it's really important for you to explore it, right? So don't just assume because they stop speaking that you're good to go, or because you're done speaking, they're good to go. You know, hey Kyle, you know, are we good? You know what I mean? Does does that address the concern that you had? If they say no, spend more time, ask them why, and then address it again. And if not, then move on. Okay, um, during the objection phase, it's really, really important for you to be able to cue out. Um, for example, um, I speak a lot, so it's really important for me to take a minute and pause. Let the person speak their mind, and when I'm done, just even pause and just wait. And if they don't say anything, then acknowledge and then move forward, okay? So uh, again, checklist, no need to screenshot any of this, right? So for those of you who've, who've maybe found value in what I've shared, I've kind of put some checklists for me, like this becomes intuitive because I've done this for so long, but um, there are things in place here that you can do this. I'm actually writing out a huge blog about this with the type of questions and all a lot more detail. So there'll be a blog that complements this after I get back from Cancun. So for those of you that are interested in this, I'll connect with, um, Kyle, and he'll share it in the group um, once that's done. But Your blogs are always epic. <laughs> thank you. So really, these are the different stages and some of the checklists for you to kind of keep in mind as you go through it. Cool. Um, again, just a value add for those of you, paid discovery has been a big thing. Um, loved what um, Nick's been doing a little bit. I saw that um, Hans did a, uh, that tremendous resource with you, Kyle, uh, mm -hmm. on our blog. We have a pay, like I do paid discovery. So I talked about why we do paid discovery. Um, ultimately, here's some crazy stats. Um, I When I learned paid discovery through another um, coaching group, so it's not something I came up with. I took it and, and adapted it over the years. But here's the crazy stats. Since 2015, I've only lost one project that I've taken to paid discovery. And that company hired internally a year and a half later because I keep following up with people like your website still hasn't been done. So I've not lost any project outside of that that I've taken to paid discovery. And that's because again, I'm continuing to build trust, establish my authority, learn about their business. Cause once I'm done and they paid me, they're gonna be like, wow, like this dude totally understands our business. He can now provide a solution. They're not gonna spend money again or go speak to other people and run through that process. And it's my job to make sure that they understand that. So what do I do and how do I position it? I really just, oh. Go ahead, were you saying something, Kyle? No, sorry, I hit my microphone. <laughs> All right, no worries. So then simply put, like I just let them know, like in order to get gain clarity, 
and understand your needs and strategies and goals, like you would be hard pressed to think that 30 minutes on a call is going to allow me to do that. Especially if you think, you know, I can help generate $300,000 in revenue for your business. I really need to understand how to gain a competitive advantage outside of the website. We need to talk about USP, uh, customer transactions, you know, your ideal customers, what are your high value products or services and how do we position them? Things like that. I cover all of that in our blog. And simply put, I tell them that at the end of the day, if, if clear understanding, avoiding scope creep, budget creep, expectation gaps are what they want, then that's why we do discovery. And if they don't, obviously they can continue on. And most people are happy to move forward with discovery. Also, let me uh, clarify that we do not do paid discovery for people that are looking to jump onto a retainer. That's where we actually ask for a block of hours up front to do an analysis. And part of that is jumping onto a call with them and stuff. But the paid discovery does come into place if they're doing any of our core service offerings, which would be like you know an SEO retainer or a complete website redesign or digital marketing then we take them through discovery. So paid discovery doesn't work for, um, we don't do paid discovery for people looking to say, well, Cliff, we just have a WordPress site. We're willing to jump onto your retainer, willing to pay you for the care plan. Uh, we just need to get started, right? That I don't take them through that because uh, one, they won't get the same value out of it. And two, that's a roadblock for me getting the sale. Once I can get them into it, like three months down the road, I can say to them, well, look, you know, I think it's time for us to analyze the work we've done and what we can kind of do. Should we continue to invest in the site or really redesign it? Okay, so that's how I position it. For us, usually we're looking at discovery being um, 10 to 15% of the project cost. Um, okay. Uh, some people call it discovery, project intensives, planning, road mapping. It depends on what you do. So I'm about to close out here. Um, for those of you that do use audits and, and are part as part of your sales process, for me, I love uh, the audits just because it allows me. And again, if you don't use audits, all I'm saying is find a simple productized offering, right? So if you can close the deal, you can at least say like, these are some things I can do to quickly generate some revenue, get my foot in the door, get some quick wins. So using audits for that is really easy and simple, productized offering, upsell and cross-sell services. Um, again, not spending a lot of time on this, but to just say, you know, if you're selling a specific service to an existing customer, this is that adding customer lifetime value part. If you're doing web design, but you haven't focused on on-page SEO or GMB, you don't have to know everything. It's fairly simple in our system processes and shows all of that to you. But my recommendation is learn some of those things so they can they can add value to your customers, help them get, get results and increase your customer lifetime value. We do quarterly or annual assessments with our clients to be able to, again, use the same framework to continue to increase the customer lifetime value while delivering value to them. So for those of you that are on retainers or care plans, right? Set up an annual call or set up a quarterly call and build a long list of things that you can do to help them and then be able to position it. Sometimes you might get pushback like, well, why aren't you doing this with the care plan? Well, your care plan's two hours a, a month. Like this is like 15 hours, 20 hours of work and we're already doing the other work. This is why we recommend you bump up to the next level, maybe for the next six months to the year or you know, put a bucket of hours up front for the next two months and we'll take care of it, right? Simple ways uh, to come up as that trusted advisor strategically pointing them with a competitive advantage versus potentially someone else um, reaching out to them and saying, hey, look, there's a long list of things that need to be addressed to, to, you know, to get you better results. If you know, I, I will add, you have an awesome, uh, one of those epic blog posts on setting up those annual or quarterly meetings with clients. I'll make sure yep. to share that when I repost this replay, I've shared it in the group and through the newsletter before, but it'll walk you through, uh, why you should be doing that, how to set those up and then what you should do in those meetings. It's really, really useful. Yeah, thank you. And then again, uh, last last thing, discovery insights. When you're doing discovery, like these audits are a great way to quickly see uh, points. And again, it's not about criticizing them. It's about saying like, look, when we propose the new SEO service or new website, these are all the things that we will address. Because remember, a, a, a business owner or even a, a IT director or a sales marketing director doesn't know the intricacies of important things that matter. So when you tell them like, look, as part of this project, 
we'll do your on-page SEO, or we'll make sure we do a conversion rate optimization check, and it'll include these things. It helps them understand why you're charging what you're charging versus most of the time them thinking you're putting pictures and copy onto a page and why are you charging X, Y, Z, okay? Um, uh, now we're done. I'm just going to show you some examples. Here is someone through COVID. I know a lot of people were hurting through COVID. I'm showing you how our framework worked um, with just a couple examples. This is a $10,000 website and a $2,500 retainer. This is now like since May of last year. Now they're like $40,000 in with our services. Um, the guy reached out to us. We had done some work for him in 2017, some ad hoc, simple work. Um, he reached out saying, hey, you know, do you have, literally, do you make websites voice searchable, right? The guy doesn't know anything about technology. So I responded back saying, hey, you know, it's COVID, hope you're safe. You know, my wife's doing well, our family's doing well, but things are crazy. Because they're crazy, I'd like to add some value to your business. But just to let you know, we don't do ad hoc work anymore. So you have to be on our minimum care plan. And we could do, you know, we charge $200 usually for an assessment. Because of COVID XYZ, we do it for you for free. The guy responds back and he's just like, hey, thanks you know, for the time and you've helped us with stuff. But look, we're a small business. We cannot spend money. I, I knew that they were a seven figure business you know, um, because of past work we did. He just said he's a small business. So I'm showing you a no is not always a no. He says like, we've done SEO work before, no results. We've been promised tenfold, all of these type of things. I love the fact that he was like, and building a new website is something I hope we never have to do again, right? So most people who see this are gonna be like, dude, like this is red flags, but because of COVID, because we had some extra time, I took the time, did an audit, telling him I understand where he's coming from, why we usually charge what we do, that we're results focused, ran an audit, but because I didn't know if this guy would be an ideal person. I ran their audit and I did a video teardown because I knew the report is of no value, right? Think about it. If you go to a dealership and they give you like this 120 point checklist, it sounds sexy because it's 120 points. But for example, I have no clue about anything. So if they say oil change or oil change, if this needs to be done because you can be safe with your family, I do it, right? So that's the approach I take. So in the video, I just kind of reviewed the key problems and I told them why it matters and why they're not getting results, right? Gave them some information about pay points. The guy actually responds back and says, uh, okay, I'll give you $3,000. Uh, let's do it. And then that's when I was like, you know what, if I'm a trusted advisor, $3,000 into, a, uh, in that case, like a shitty, pardon the language, shitty website would get them somewhere, but it really wouldn't help. So what I did was I did another website audit. So before I just did, you know, a quick assessment, then the next time around, I did a full audit. And I said, look, you know, you wanted on page SEO and that type of stuff. I showed that to you, but I just want to let you know that here's a 40 page report. It's not going to make any sense to you. Watch this video. And in that video, I told them why investing $3,000 is like investing that money into a 1990 Accord, which is like a Honda Japanese car. Um, and that it's uh, running on fumes and that it won't last them, you know, many more years to come. Why I think they should invest, you know, 10 plus thousand dollars to do a really good site that can deliver results. Uh, the dude responds back and uh, literally says like, you need to come, you know, be help our salespeople. We want to work. Uh, this is how it, you know, this is how it goes. Sign up, done. The guys paid for it. Um, my point here is you can see this. This was like 622 when they approved it. Um, deliver on your promise, whatever that promise is, right? You know what it is. Don't create promises that you can't deliver on. Like literally once we launched the site, the guy was like, I'm excited. I got calls. After that, we took them from just building a website and some on-page SEO to a SEO retainer plan to PPC plan and to a digital marketing retainer with us, right? And a care plan. So all of that adds up now and they're a $40,000 plus client for us on a annual basis. Um, here's another quick example uh, of how we sold $2,400. We got our foot in the door. We built a website actually for a guy, for this guy. After we built it, I added more value. So this is more about increasing customer lifetime value. Um, so let me show you that. Once we built the website, the guy really loved it. He asked us, you know, he had insinuated like he wants more traffic and more leads. So I told him like, look, if you, and these are all productized offerings, right? The GMB, local citations, advanced on page SEO with the four pages, right? Four new pages, 250 a page. Like I, I presented some additional productized service offerings that I knew could deliver value. 
and um, hopefully generate, re generate revenue and then continue to send the guy up. So he responds back like, look, I don't have that money. Um, realistically, can you do it for cheaper? And I responded back and I told him no. Like, this is how we do it. Like to get results, we need to do X, Y, Z. Um, screenshot this, I'm gonna review it. And then literally the dude just um, responded back three minutes later, like, okay, just invoice it, right? Like he didn't want to a few minutes before, but just by giving him context around why we don't, you know, just take these low value projects because at the end of the day, we'll make some money, but they're not gonna get the results and that's not gonna make a win-win for either one of us long-term, it works. I'm sharing this with you to just let you know Things don't have to be complicated with project proposals, especially if you have simplified pro, um, product offerings, right? Productized services, simplified, no need for complexity. Um, this is really the invoice, boom, simple invoice paid out. I've, I've clearly told them what we're doing on page SEO, four pages, local citations, 50 to 100 directories, white spark, Moz local, all done, GMB optimization, all of this can be done, no complexity. I know where the profitability comes from, done. Um, then once that was done, I did a video, like, here's why it matters, John, um, check out some of the results. I think you should now move on to our entry level plan and voila, he's on that. Right. And that's just kind of how it works. Um, I'm going to close out here. Um, I'll speak more on like lead generation at another time. I just wanted to let you all know that if you do have an ideal audience, you have a compelling offer, you have some social proof like reviews and testimonials, and you know how to market your business, whether that's SEO or um, paid marketing or uh, B2B groups, it's super, super simple for you to generate leads. Conversation for another day, but my point was um, look, don't try the cold email. Don't try the cold calls. Most people are trying that because like that's the Hail Mary. There is a place for that. Obviously, um, Kyle has um, a, a lead gen course that you can pick up and walk through and that helps you. But remember, if you don't properly know what you do and for who you do it, then you're kind of, it's just a shotgun approach. So my point was once you know that, like getting into Facebook groups where your audience is, getting onto guest blogs or workshops, kind of like I'm on um, Kyle's where I'm delivering value, but at the same time, my audience is there for the right people. They might say, let me check out my web audit, right? So there's easy ways to generate leads once you can solve these four things or three things. Here's examples of, of lead generation where you're leading with value, right? Once you're in a group, don't join a group and start spamming people, but add value, engage, build interaction and, and relationships, and then maybe offer a website audit or a website teardown, no audit at all, just a teardown live in the group or record it in Loom and share it in the group. And the right people will say like, hey, I want something like that. Can you do something like that for me? I'd like to speak to you about it, right? So these are some lead with value type strategies. All right, this is someone who did uh, that in my web audit. Brandy worked with, with um, shoulder partners, meaning like CPAs and um, print shops to, uh, to in essence make this offering together to all their customers. And she was able to increase her list. I'm just showing this to you to say, think outside of the box, even when it comes to lead generation, that uh, it, it, one to many can work really well versus one to one. Uh, I'm, this is not all pitchy stuff just saying like, look, this works. These are people who use our system. There's dozens of people in the admin bar, if not maybe even close to hundred people that use it in there. So if y'all are interested in checking out like how to use audits in your sales process, there's a special offer uh, for the admin bar. Here's my disclaimer, because uh, you know, Kyle's so good about it. Kyle has a user account, but he is, um, he, this is not something where he's getting any commission period. All right. So Kyle, I'll do that for you right now. I told Kyle, hopefully one day soon we'll become an official sponsor with him and all of that works. But for now, this is just a give back to the admin bar group. You can check that out. And we have a free trial for those of you who haven't tried it out. And I know we're running late. I just want to close with when you listen to this type of stuff. Um, I'm one of those people where I struggle with comparison. Where's this person? Why are they closing these type of deals? What type of services they're doing? Why shouldn't I offer those services? I just wanna let you know that you guys are special, each and every one of you. You guys have a talent that you, that you are providing in your services. Do what you love, do more of it, charge for it. And uh, for me, success comes from making an impact with my family, uh, in my community, with our church and globally, making impact with other entrepreneurs just like you and our clients. And for me, success is doing what I want 
with who I want, when I want, and I wish you all success. I'm in the group. Uh, I'm going to answer any questions that y'all have here. Don't know what Kyle's schedule is, but I'm in the group. So anytime anyone has any questions, I can pour out any information uh, or contextual uh, value. Um, please let me know. And I appreciate everyone's time. Thank you. Oh, Facebook Ooh. group. I'm not going to go past that. Thank you. We're done. You're good. You're good. No, I, I want to definitely, uh, you do have an amazing Facebook group. So I'll make sure to grab links for that and put that in the replay as well. Um, like, uh, like you mentioned, the uh, my web audit, you have a free trial, people can test out the service on there, which I definitely recommend you go do um, for these, excuse me, <coughs> for these projects where you need to get on a call and have something to present to that client and be able to be able to show some kind of value on that call with client. This is such an easy way to do that. Uh, because the way my web audit set up, it's uh, put in put in their website address and press go and you basically have a beautiful presentation like the one he was just showing that you can present on that call and show them uh, the value you can bring in just this little amount of time uh, with almost no effort on your part if you're using my web audit. So that's a it's a pretty brilliant way to do it. Um, we had a couple of things in here. Uh, Karen said, um, this is excellent. What do you call your paid discovery? And do you have um, uh, the URL? I'll get her the URL in a minute. So what do you call the paid discovery with your clients? I, I, I call it paid discovery. Every, every now and then if... Um, if it is, um, if it's around development, right? Cause we do startup work outside of brochure. That's where the larger projects come in, like the hundred thousand dollar projects come in, excuse me. We then call it product road mapping. So it's a website discovery um, or marketing discovery if it's for digital marketing or web design and development. And then if it is for um, like a startup where we're building in Laravel and building a custom app, then that it's called product road mapping. And I, I'm still, I'm still in this, uh, I try to be very transparent. I'm obviously not real great at this all the time. Um, I, I'm still not at the point where I'm consistently charging for discovery with projects, but what I'm, what I'm learning is, uh, can I build a website without discovery? Absolutely. I could build a website right now for you, Cliff. I'll have you one by this afternoon, right? Yeah. I could absolutely do that. But will the website be a whole lot better if I go through discovery? And I think going through that process yourself as an agency and saying, okay, here are all the projects that I didn't do discovery on and the results those projects are getting. And here are all the projects where I did do discovery on and the results I'm getting there. Sometimes we have to convince ourselves first. So I think a lot of people, myself included, have this hesitation about asking for money to just yeah. find out what to do on their project. Like it feels it still feels odd to us. And I think part of that is because you haven't seen the value in it yourself yet. And once you can see that value yourself and see, you can, you're going to be able to deliver so much better projects if you go through a proper discovery with a client rather than send them through an onboarding form, uh, spend 30 minutes on the phone with them and then deliver a website. Like you can deliver a website that way, but it's not going to be at the same quality and level as if you went through that discovery thing. So I think that's one of these ways to look at it is, um, you know, put your foot in the water with it and see how projects turn out with those versus without them. You don't have to, if you're still nervous about it, you don't have to always charge for discovery starting today going forward. If you can, that's great. But if you just need to dip your toe into it, I think you can convince yourself pretty easily. And when you believe it, it's a lot easier to make customers uh, believe it. Um, one other thing uh, Brad said in here, is it worth asking for a payment as a percentage of new revenue generated? So I'm guessing what he means is setting up some kind of incentivized system where if they make more, you make more. Have you done anything like that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, no, there's a lot of models that are around that. I don't know the business enough, right? So for example, after, after three months, after we've gone through some stuff, I can talk to them and have that conversation to say, hey, look, you know, if we're bringing XYZ value to your business, um, what would that look like? Initially, the, 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 here's, the, here's why we don't do it. We, can't, we can control the type of leads they get to the best of our ability, but we can't control their sales process. 
right? Um, so for example, if a receptionist doesn't like picking up her phone and the phone's ringing, like we can do that. And, and we've done call rail before, like obviously on, mm-hmm. a, on ad um, tracking and we've seen people be rude. Like one of our clients, the, the estimator was like, yeah, you know, we can come out in about two and a half to three weeks. The person was like, well, I kind of need someone this week. So they were losing tons of deals and the company actually, as we went through the recordings, changed their sales process because they didn't know that that was that big a deal because to them, they just knew that they weren't getting much and people were saying, you know, we wanted people sooner, but they didn't realize that the estimator was always going with the, the furthest most date so that they could impress the person if they could come in out earlier. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying to you, simply put, I haven't, I don't do any of those rank and um, sell type websites. I don't do any of that type of stuff. Either. Yeah. You, you take on more risk that way for sure. Yeah. Uh, Jared asks, Cliff, do you provide a document with detailed issues and solutions for your discovery, something that they can keep regardless whether they work with you in the future or not? Yeah, I do. So Jared, um, I know you're uh, a customer. So yeah, I, I on the agency plan, in essence, you can export out a PowerPoint. So I take the PowerPoint report, export it out, and then I add in some stuff about heat mapping, some customer persona stuff that we put in place, and then I do a solutions presentation. So uh, Jared, read my, um, go ahead and read my discovery blog. But in essence, I say I cover things from transactional values to customer um, personas to issues with the website. And I present it, I call it a solutions present presentation because here's another thing I do that probably most of you do not do is I never write a proposal Um, And I don't even call it a proposal. I call it an agreement because on my solutions presentation, they're making an agreement to the number I'm giving them. The only reason I'm putting together the agreement is to say, here's all the things I covered in the solutions presentation. This is what's included. You agreed to that call, um, sign it and drop me a check in the mail. See, when you, when most people are running through the proposal in your sales process, there's in essence, a, a framework put in place where there's an option to say no. Like, no, I don't want to work with you. So I've spent an hour and a half or I've spent now down to 45 minutes because we've templatized stuff, but still I don't want to spend that time. So I go through the solutions presentation at the end of it. I'm saying, here's the investment. Are you ready to move forward, Kyle? And your answer is going to be either we need to talk through some stuff or yes, no is usually not an option because like I told you, because of the framework I have in place. And so when you say yes, then, or you might say, well, Cliff, we don't have the 24,000. And then I'll say, well, okay, let's look at what we can remove. So then we remove that. And then I say, okay, I'll get you an agreement. Um, the understanding is when you get the agreement and you sign it within one to three business days, a check is in the mail or you pay it through the credit card, which obviously we're looking for the credit card. So it's right off and we're ready to rock and roll. Absolutely. Well, perfect. I think that covers all the questions that everybody had in here. But like Cliff said, he's inside the group, so you can always tag him in a post. Uh, I'll put this uh, replay together in a blog post on our website, along with the links we talked about in here uh, and try to have everything together for everybody on that. But like I said, definitely go check out my web audit, try the free trial, see what you think of that. Uh, Cliff, I really appreciate you sharing all this with us today. Like I said, I've been looking forward uh, to this for a while. I'm glad I didn't have to screenshot everything because there was about 500 screenshots I needed to take during this call. So uh, appreciate the massive value you brought to us today. Thank you. A pleasure and honor. Everybody, thanks for your time on the call. Kyle, I appreciate it, man. All right. Off to Cancun for you. Off to California for me. Cheers. All right. We'll talk to y'all later.